brand. Get the amazing sound of planar magnetic headphones with the X Hi Feynman HE4XXs from Drop. The highly efficient magnetic planar design and adjustable fit make them the perfect pair for anyone seeking legendary audio without the legendary price tag. To learn more and to take advantage of the current sale of the Hi Feynman 4XXs, head to the drop in the link below. So whenever I do a budget build, I always try and size out, well, depending on the budget, but normally if we're doing like really low budget stuff, like the recent videos we've done this year even, uh, I always will grab eight gigabyte kits of two four gig sticks. And every time I do that, people will chime in and say, Jay, you should just get a single eight gig stick because single channel doesn't really matter that much more anyway. And then the idea is that you can upgrade to 16 gigs later. Well, we're gonna talk about that. We tested quite a few different configs today in three different titles. One title of each basically either heavily favors GPU over CPU, heavily favors, well, both balanced, and then another title that's all CPU. And any CPU based or bound title is going to be uh, also very dependent on RAM because RAM and CPUs, you know, they're, they're kind of like a peanut butter and jelly. They have to go together, right? Uh, tuna no crust, I don't know, something like that. So basically what we did was a couple of different configs here. Now we're gonna talk about some of the ideology. We're gonna talk about some of the variables because there's no test that I could do that is going to cover all of the bases, that's gonna cover everyone's situation. But I feel like the three titles that we chose are gonna be at least indicative enough of what you could expect to, what the, the, the repercussions and or payoffs are going to be with your RAM config, depending on how demanding your title is on CPU. Now it's not just CPU though, because if your CPU is dependent on memory and it's getting choked off or bottlenecked with not enough memory, so you're having to do more, more complete uh, memory refresh cycles, page swap, all that sort of stuff, then what's gonna happen here is your GPU is gonna slow down because it's waiting for your CPU to be ready for, ready for the data the GPU is sending. So the three titles though that we chose for these tests for CPU bound is going to be World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. Not classic, although classic's probably gonna, would be just the same. But Battle for Azeroth sitting specifically in Ogremar, because if you play World of Warcraft, then you know the major cities are where all of these slowdowns happen. So we kind of chose the worst case scenario in terms of what you would expect with frames per second. Um, for the balance test, we chose Far Cry 5's built-in synthetic benchmark. Now, yes, I know there are differences in performance between the synthetic benchmark and the actual gameplay. But what we're looking for here are the deltas or the differences between the different configs. If the game itself is harder to run, then you can expect those deltas to probably be even wider than what we're gonna show you here. But we needed a, a, a realistic back-to-back -back test to allow us to at least be able to measure those differences. Um, World of Warcraft, actually, uh, we're in Ogremar. Uh, because the major cities are where the biggest slowdowns are in terms of player models and things that the CPU is having to calculate. It has to communicate with the server to where these players are and draw it and all that sort of stuff. So the CPU is handling all of, handling all of that. And we're flying above Ogremar's uh, trade district area um, in my Druid. So just floating there, you can see all kinds of stuff happening. And we found that that was a, what we did was we found where the FPS dropped the most in Ogremar and then used that spot, which is identical for all the tests. And then for the, we'll run on a potato, whatever. All the FPS um, title is for Doom. And what we're checking with Doom is whether or not the different configs obviously reduce our FPS. So the testing methodology for today, because there's no way that I could do a, any testing that's gonna be 100% indicative of your experience. There's just too many variables out there. So we've chose three titles that we felt are gonna be kind of like small, medium, and large in terms of memory usage. And then we chose the configs that we think are gonna be most relevant to people out there. We didn't go with the fastest memory, we didn't go with the largest memory or any of that sort of stuff. So what we've got right here, we'll talk about the G-Skill in a second. I've got four four gigabyte sticks of ballistic sport. This is DDR4, 2400 megahertz XMP profile RAM. The base is 2133 for DDR4. We ran these at 2666. We did a small overclock on the memory because we don't think a lot of people are out there running through 3200, 3400, 3600 memory. Uh, we just kind of went with something more in the middle, which we think people would be buying. These are straight from our budget builds that I've done in the past. And the reason why we're doing this video is because I always recommend, if you're on a budget, go with two sticks of four gigabyte. Eight gigabytes is more than enough for most games today and you want dual channel. I said that in every single reason that we've ever purchased memory for our budget builds. And every single time, plenty of people will step up and say, Jay, that's stupid, get eight gigabytes single stick, that way you can upgrade to 16 later. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video about when you would do that versus when you wouldn't. 
But our configs that we ran them at today are 16 gigabytes of, um, well, 16 gigabytes in two different configs. So we've got 16 gigabytes, four times four, like this. We've also got 16 gigabytes of two times eight for dual channel. And the reason why we did that is we could also test 16 gigs in single channel. So because these are four gig sticks, the only way I could test 16 is to occupy all four slots. So that's why we've got two eight gig sticks here. No, they are not the exact same speed as the ballistics, but however, we did match the timings and the 2666 megahertz speeds to the G skill. So the other thing too, is that we, can, we tested in a single four gig config. We tested in a dual four gig in single channel. So eight gig single channel versus eight gig dual channel. And then obviously the four times four 16 channel, which is automatically by default a dual channel because we occupy all four slots. So without further ado, here are the tests. Predictions going into this, um, we've already run the test, but Phil was expecting single channel or dual channel not to matter. I was the one that was like, I've always recommended dual channel, even on a budget build, because I've seen how it can matter. So who was right? All right, so first up, WoW at uh, 1440p. Now, one thing that we noticed with World of Warcraft, Word of Warcraft, Word of Rollcraft, is that 1080p and 1440p FPS was identical. That's because 2080 Ti can pretty much bottleneck a CPU at 1080p. Um, but first up, 16 gigabytes, 2666 in dual uh, channel was our, our baseline. That's like obviously the fully unlimited, this is as fast as it's gonna be able to go was 140 FPS average. Uh, as soon as we dropped down to single, we lost 25 FPS. We dropped down to 115 average. Now when we did eight gigabyte dual, we dropped to 133. So more than the 16 single, but less than obviously the 16 dual, but not by that much. We only went from 140 to 133 when we went to eight gigabytes. So half the capacity, but stayed within dual channel. We only lost seven FPS, but eight gigabyte single, and 16 gigabyte single were identical at 115 FPS. So as you can see right here, capacity, at least in this particular title, was much less important than dual channel. And the reason for that is as a CPU can grab information from the individual channels, it just makes it that much faster and that much more responsive. So what's happening here is as the CPU is waiting on the, the this memory cycle to refresh and be able to get all of the information it needs from a single channel, the GPU is having to wait to draw frames because the CPU has not processed those frames yet. So that's why dual channel is so much better in this particular title. Now four gigabyte single um, at 2666 got us 110 FPS. And we did one test for the hell of it to see what happens if we drop from 2066 to 2133. And we went from 110 down to 97. So that's gonna prompt another video from us in the near future where we keep all the constants of ter in terms of channel and capacity the same, but we see what happens with different titles and RAM speed. Now moving on to Far Cry 5, we did it in 1080p here because again, we wanted to get as much FPS as we could. We also wanted to see what the worst case scenario would be in terms of bottlenecking. So going for high frame rate, and then making the memory changes will sort of um, exaggerate a little bit some of the memory stuff that we're trying to demonstrate here. But realistically, a 2080 Ti for a 1080p is not gonna be a very smart move. Uh, we find that obviously, if you're gonna be running a 1080 Ti, do at least 1440p or higher. Uh, but moving on. So our baseline test for 16 gigs dual channel, again, all 2666 memory, um, 134 FPS. So it's kind of funny that it was so close to the World of Warcraft. Um, but 16 gigabytes single channel, dropped all the way down to 110 FPS. So that is a 24 FPS loss. That's a pretty big percentage loss by just literally having one stick moved into the RAM, the wrong RAM slot. So eight gigabytes dual went from 134 to 133. So once again, the capacity of 16 gigabytes, which a lot of people are saying 16 gigs are go home with these builds, um, you can kind of see it's not holding water here, at least with this title because one FPS difference, and that's still margin of error. We ran all these tests four times and then averaged them. Eight gigabyte dual, like I said, 133. Eight gigabyte single, 108. 
So 108 for 8 gig single versus 110 for 16 gig single. Two FPS difference, but twice the capacity. Yeah, you can see right there that um, obviously I would favor a lower capacity dual channel setup for this title than any of the uh, higher capacity single channel stuff. I mean, I don't think anyone's gonna run a 16 gig single stick. Um, in fact, ours weren't even boot because we have to update the BIOS. But anyway, I digress. Four gigabyte single um, gave us 101 FPS. A note about Far Cry 5 with four gigabyte, that's below the minimum spec. So what we saw was the first run was very stuttery. Um, there was even like the chart, we even go into the red. Um, we saw the, the seaplane couldn't even keep up with the test because the test is gonna do the same amount of time no matter what, but it's how many frames can be drawn in that amount of time. So the seaplane fell behind and never even made its last run. The explosion never even went off. So there was clearly some computing errors happening with the title. Um, the boat didn't even render like at one part of it. Well, when I mentioned stuttering here, I don't mean like micro stutter. I mean full on one or two second pauses. We're below minimum spec at that point. You should expect weirdness. Um, but Doom, our FPS title, the one that is like just runs on a potato. 200 FPS across the board from 16 gigabytes dual channel down to four gigabyte single channel all the way down to 2133 megahertz, 200 FPS because that's the engine cap. So what the takeaway here is regarding that title as I've said it before, more game developers could definitely learn from ID. ID, 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 whatever. ID. ID. Now, Phil made the fair point of, yeah, but they're much smaller maps than say like Battlefield or anything like that. But still, it's still a beautiful game that holds up four years after the fact. So now the question at the end of the day is, Jay, which config should I be running then? Well, I think the obvious answer is the biggest capacity you can get in at least dual channel. Now with Threadripper and X299 on Intel, you've got quad channel there, which means you want at least one stick to occupy all four channels. So a future piece we're gonna do is, is anything more than dual channel even necessary for gaming? I think the spoiler alert there is probably not, but you never know. We've done tests before, where we've been completely wrong and, uh, and surprised by that. Now, it's gonna come down entirely to the title that you are playing. And you can usually tell how demanding that title is on CPU and memory by the amount of memory that it sort of has as a min spec versus recommended. You find a lot of titles these days, minimum spec, uh, eight gigabytes, recommended 16. So if you see that, then you know already, you're, you're gonna wanna run your 16 gigabytes. I'm always gonna recommend getting two sticks with one caveat. If you're building a budget system, a lot of budget motherboards only have two RAM slots, which means you can't upgrade your capacity later without changing both sticks. So that's why we tend to get the, the dual four gig getting us eight gig total if we have two RAM slots because although you could do a single eight gig in one slot, as you saw with these slides, you are in every instance here, with the exception of Doom, are going to be leaving performance on the table just because of the slowdown the CPU is experiencing in terms of accessing memory. So if you do not see an upgrade in your foreseeable future, then get yourself the dual sticks to occupy both channels. If you have four channels of memory, then still get the, the two sticks because you can still then add two more like we did here and occupy all four channels. And unless you're going for world record overclocking, you're not gonna see any sort of issues with occupying all channels of memory, uh, with, with DIMMs anyway. If you are like, okay, I'm just, getting this, I'm just getting this right now and next month or so, I'll probably add more, then I would recommend getting this single eight gig stick and adding a match stick later because of a month to deal with single channel performance is not that big of a deal. But if you don't see an upgrade coming, then definitely do it. Past that, I think the results here are still surprising to me, only because I think there was a bigger gap there than I was expecting. I knew there was gonna be a difference. I just didn't know by how much. So when we came into work today, I said, I wanna do some RAM testing. And then during this test, we started playing around with RAM speeds and we noticed that there was a, quite a bit of a difference um, in like World of Warcraft and even Far Cry 5 when we started slowing down the memory. So what we're gonna do in our next part of this particular RAM testing is we are going to take on our Intel platform here, and maybe an, an AMD one as well, but AMD has been kind of tested recently with the new Ryzen stuff. I don't think it's as relevant for us to test that right now on the heels of other testers just having done it, but we're gonna go from 2133 all the way up to like 4,000 to see what happens. And so if you guys have any titles that you know of that are very RAM dependent and RAM speed and capacity can make a major measurable difference or a tangible difference, then please comment down below. Also too, if you think there's other titles that would have been effect affected by these tests, comment down below. We need those data points to know what games are kind of 
really demonstrating and negating the tests that we're doing here. So if you guys found this video helpful, then do me a favor, why don't you give this video a, li a lick? Give this video a lick. Lick your screen right now. Lick if your screen's anything like mine, you probably shouldn't lick it. Lick it twice for dual channel. Oh yeah, lick twice for, for dual channel. <laughs> One other point I, I think I wanna make too is if you're not running a 2080 Ti, you probably would've saw even less of a, uh, a difference here, but you still would've seen a difference because there still becomes a point at which you're exceeding the speed of the CPU can actually handle the amount of data that the GPU is sending it, as well as uh, the memory is able to let the CPU access it. Where that point is, I don't know. Maybe there's another video title right there where at what point does your GPU affect, or at what point does memory affect your GPU? Phil, write that down, I'm full of good ideas today. <laughs> Ones that have done, been done a thousand times in the internet, but not on this channel. All right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we will see you in the next one.